It's time to do a bit of prediction time. Prediction time. It's time to do prediction time. There, there you go. Clumsy opening. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about gimmicks and comic books and what I think is next. Hey everybody, this is Birch on this freezing morning. I, I mean, I don't know, it's 24 degrees, it's uh, it's February? I, I mean, I, I guess that's not that cold, but in the in the Seattle area, that's cold. Uh, or I'm getting old and suddenly I've turned into one of those, like, it's cold outside, people. Um, you know, eh, it's ter terrifying. Aging sucks. I, I recommend that nobody does it. Anyway, um, the <laughs> we comics go through waves. Um, th <clears throat> this is true. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, I need my coffee. Um, this is just the worst opening ever. Um, comic goes in waves. You have uh, various uh, themes and cycles where you have like cardstock covers, you have foil covers, you have bag covers, and you have uh, reboots, you have guest stars. You have just different kind of gimmicks and things. And one thing about comics is that they are cyclical in that one, you know, a gimmick is never never fully dead. It can you know re be reborn uh, like a vampire and return with uh, with you know gimmick covers again or some some kind of you know theme. It, it rarely goes away forever. We already saw a return of some of the kind of foil covers and other things. We're not really seeing a return of the the, the stamp cover, the cover where either it's got an embossed uh, aspect to it. Uh, those are always weird. I remember there was an Avengers cover, and I think it was Black Storm was going on at the time, and there was a, you know, the kind of embossed character, and Cersei was on the team at that point. And I remember uh, this customer coming in and, you know, getting the pile of comics from the shelf, walking up to the counter, and he's got, the, the guy is just, you know, kind of gross uh, person, and he is just kind of idly rubbing his thumb over the uh, breasts of uh, Cersei which are embossed on this cover. So you got this little, and guys just kind of, you know, kind of moving the thumb uh, here. I mean, like kind of in this relaxed meditative state. And I'm like, you know, yeah, take the comics, bring this guy up, put this stuff in a bag, maybe I put it in two bags and then, uh, you know, get this guy out of here. But it just, it, it's weird how you, you get these memories that stick with you. And some of them you like, you know, you have wonderful memories. The first time you met your, your, your girlfriend or your wife, you, you know, your, First time your kid walked, and the weirdo in the comic shop who was, uh, you know, sensually rubbing uh, Cersei's breast in a Galactic Storm foil Avengers cover. That's... <sighs> anyway, um, so predictions. I think that we've seen some some covers, some things. I think what I think we're coming into uh, in 2020, 2021, is I think that so. So I think comic shops sorry, comic publishers are looking for more ways to get revenue out of the comic shops. The variant, the world of variants, I believe is coming to not necessarily in the end, but it's played out. The collectors are just not as into variants as they used to be. That transition has happened to where uh, fans and buyers are more interested in variants because they're trying to get a piece of art by an artist they like, not necessarily because they think this particular variant cover is going to net them more money than another one. I think that's why you see some of the, uh, I guess, the more cheesecake artists uh, being used for variant covers because they know that comic collectors are, you know, fans of Jake Scott Campbell or or, uh, or any of the art germ these these kind of artists, and so they're you know they're gravitating toward those covers. But it's not necessarily a money thing. It's more of just a, I like this artist, I want this cover kind of thing, which is healthy in a lot of respects. So I think the next. Thing that comic publishers are going to attempt is a greater level of personalization. They like that kind of variant. You order a bunch of things, and I think this is going to seem like a weird uh, stretch for a lot of people. But it, right now, very popular in toys, in kids' toys. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about under ten. Is this idea of the surprise box or the surprise egg? Um, you see character or toys that basically you know you you open them up. And inside the egg are like 20 more little eggs. And inside each of the little eggs is like a little tiny toy. And there, it's all random. It's all, you know, a surprise. You don't know what you're going to get. Um, there's this toy that was really popular about, 
I don't know, a year ago, two years ago, called LOL Surprise. And there's uh, this thing, Hatchimals, which is also like the Christmas gift of the year. And there's all these, these kinds of things. And the premise is, is basically, you don't know what you're going to get. There's a bunch of collector's items in these toys. And it's a really great thing for the company because, um, you know, it's, it's a blind box. So therefore, if the kid opens it up, they're very happy. Oh, look, I've got, you know, 20 little blue bunnies in there and, a, you know, a pink rabbit. Uh, then, hey, I see on the back of the box that there's a special rare kind of one in 1,000 silver rabbit. So I'm, I'm saying this all. I've got two young girls. So, of course, I'm buying all this crap for my house. So I think in the comics world, anything where there's a collector uh, aspect to it, and there is in comics, I think there's at least some people thinking. And, I, I mean, this is a bit of a cheat. I've, I've heard editors in comic books speculate about how can we tap into that? How could we do the same thing? How can we have that same, you know, surprise element to the comic. And so I think what we're going to see attempted relatively soon, I would guess in the next 12 months, is we're going to see the bagged comic return, similar to the uh, Death of Superman bagged comic, or there, there's been lots of bags. But the bag is opaque, meaning you can't see the comic inside of it. And the comic inside of it is they, they printed, say, 20 different versions of this comic. Maybe it's, it will start with just the cover, or maybe you'll have, um, you know, 20 different cover variants and a one in 100, you know, artist signed version. But they're all going to go in the bag. You don't know what you're going to get. And then these are sold to stores and the stores put the bags up and the, the you know, the customer comes in and they have the choice. I can open it up and see what the surprise is, or I can keep it as a collector's version, or maybe I want to buy three so I can, you know, maybe get more. And I think we're destined to see that in the next year. We're destined to see the surprise what's in this comic bag comic. And I think <laughs> I'm joking about what I'm about to say, but I mean, you can think of it as this way too. You can, you, you know, we can take this to its logical conclusion. I mean, I'm always pissed when uh, publishers change the creative teams on books like two comics in. Well, if you've got a, you know, bag comic, then you could just, you could have everybody be surprised by it. It's like, it's Fantastic Four. Who's writing it? Who's drawing it? Could be a famous artist. Could be some guy we hired from Argentina for $10 a page. You won't know until you open the comic. Ha ha. I mean, you know, we can, we can certainly go there. That would, that would be backfire on a lot of people, but you know, could happen. You know, you never know. Um, anyway, I think that it's inevitable. We're going to get the bag comics again. Um, yes, there's production issues with that. It does raise the price on things and everything else, but not terribly. And I also think if you're a publisher, if you're a Marvel or DC, um, you are thinking about past the direct market and you're thinking about what are some gimmicks and some incentives that we could dangle in front of a Walmart or a Target or a, you know, a Publix or a, you know, Safeway or something like that. What are the, the things that we could say are, you know, hey, it's a collector's item. What, what's a new thing we can market that direction? Um, and this would be one of them. This fits nicely with the toys, as I mentioned earlier. It's um, uh, something that is, you know, considered popular in demand. I mean, if you ever want to delve down the world of insanity, go to YouTube and look at kids unboxing toys. I'm not talking about, you know, the videos where the grown-ups unbox like a pair of iPods and they do a little review of it. I'm talking about literally a video of a you know, four-year-old opening presents. And there, there are thousands of these. There are thousands of videos of nothing but tiny kids opening boxes of toys and then taking the toy out. And that's that's it. There's no review, really. There's just kids opening boxes. And and then look at the view. There's like millions. Who's watching this? Like, I, it, it's so strange. I have a feeling that parents are like putting this on the TV for like young kids and then just leaving it on for hours. And kids are just like sitting there glued to the TV watching other kids open gifts. That sounds really, really sad. <laughs> but maybe it's just me. I don't know. Thank God my kids haven't done that, at least. Um, anyway, there's my prediction. I think we're getting bag comics. I think we're getting surprises inside the bags. I think this will all veer toward a world of how can we make things more personalized? Um, what if, you know, you had a, a event? I mean, this, this, everything, by the way, I'm saying is probably just disgusting. Uh, it sounds like that to me. What if you had an event where you, instead of publishing a full 20 page comic, you published basically uh, 10 five-page comics, like almost like an ash can, but 10 five-page comics. Then you put four random, 
comics inside of a bag, sealed it up, sent it to the comic shop. And you said, this event uh, has lots of different parts to it. Collect all the pieces to this event. You won't know what you're going to get until you open up those bags. And you might have to buy three or four bags in order to get the full story because you might use duplicate. I mean, if you go to a comic shop right now, you will see an increasing, you know, the, what's taking over from Funko uh, is the blind box of everything. I mean, they've got it for Marvel. They've got it for DC. There's Birds of Prey. There's uh, One Piece. There's My Hero Academia. There's all these, these blind boxes that have little plastic toys inside of them, but you don't know what you're going to get. And they proudly on the back display the, you know, this is one in four, this is one in a thousand, and they're selling. This is increasing in popularity. And it's it's natural for comics, for one of the publishers, to try this. It's going to happen. And so that's something to look forward to, this idea of the surprise bagged comic and everything that comes with that. So what do you think? Is this a good thing? Disgusting thing? I, I just find it horrifying, but I believe it is absolutely the near-term future that's going to be tried in comics. That's my prediction. Um, do you like it? Do you hate it? Um, what is your view? Um, if maybe I'd love to get somebody in the comments like, that sounds pretty cool to me. I'm into it. I I'd love to hear somebody to say that. Not because I want to argue with you, but you know, bring some, bring some happiness into my day. Let me know <laughs> of what you think. Uh, otherwise, hey, uh, like this video if you liked it. Uh, subscribe. Uh, you know, the, there's little buttons there that have the, the subscribe button and the like button. If you push them, then you know, candy will shoot out of your your computer right into your mouth. That's what happens. I swear. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Comic Perch. And thanks for listening.